So welcome to episode nine in this ongoing series. In this particular video, we are looking at custom data types and the conditional builder widget. These both are super important for our ongoing journey as we're building out this particular application. There's a couple other bits in there as well. Please do stick around and also please do check the link in the description if you are new to this series. Oh, and by the way, please hit the like button. That'd be really much appreciated. Let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so let's start this particular episode then with a quick productivity tip in Flutterflow. And if you haven't spotted already, the project history option up here one day will save you because what that basically means is that there is a snapshot section where if you are making changes to your Flutterflow application, you kind of think, you know something, this is not playing out how I want it to be. You can revert back to a particular snapshot. So for example, here I've got a number of different snapshots that has been created over a variety of days. If I click on this one here on Monday the 1st, of Jan, I can then see the times that I made these particular changes and I can have a quick peek. I can click on the peek option. Another browser window will open up for me. I can inspect that particular change and think, actually, that's where I need to go back to. You come back into this particular area of Flutterflow, you hit on the little revert option, and then your project is then restored back to that point in time. So the next option is then versions and versions are slightly different. And the way that I think of versions are is that you can actually take a snapshot of your entire application at that particular point in time. Now, of course, you can then go on, you can make further substantial changes to your application. And of course, you can then revert back to a particular version in time if that's what you would like to. So it's great to create versions when you are working on a significant project and you want to kind of stage your development. So that is the project history. It's well worth exploring that and using that to your advantage. So here is the running application then from the end of season one. You can see here we've got all of our sticky notes on display. We're going to start now making further enhancements to our application to get us to the point where we can now start displaying those sticky notes. Now I'm going to introduce you in this particular episode to the conditional builder widget. Now that can be the conditional builder widget is going to be really, really important to us because it's going to make a decision over whether we have any sticky notes available. If we have, then start to display the sticky notes. But if there are no sticky notes created at that particular point, which is ideally when the application is run for the first time, then what we need to display on screen is then some message back to our users to say that you need to start adding sticky notes and guide them to, to actually to do that. So the conditional builder is fantastic for uh, displaying or hiding widgets based on certain conditions within inside our application. So we're now going to head over back into Flutterflow and we're going to start building out the structure for our application to get us to the point where we can now start adding these sticky notes in. Okay, before we roll our sleeves up and we start working on the actual UI a little bit further, we need to think about the actual sticky notes themselves. We've got to kind of work out what are these actual sticky notes. They don't exist currently in our application. We, we haven't created anything to display them. But what we need to do is we need to create something in Flutterflow that's going to kind of represent an actual sticky note. Now, we can use this concept in, in Flutterflow called custom data type. So we can use a we can create a custom data type, which will be of type note. Now, we know that note is it's got a description, it's got a color, it's got the actual date that the actual sticky note was created. So we need to kind of define what that sticky note is all about. Once we have that definition, we can then think about, well, how are we gonna store those sticky notes within inside our application? Now we can use application state. We've already spoken previously about application state and about the way that it provides you um, a, a way to sort of access uh, those values throughout, throughout the whole of your application. So what we need to do is we need to create this application state variable, which will be our list of sticky notes, which will be created as per the the actual data type that we're going to create in just a moment. So we have this, um, we have this structure of our sticky note. We have a very, very strict structure to say that our sticky note is going to be represented by these particular types of field, and they are all going to be then stored within inside the application state in an actual list. Once we've got that, we can then work on our application to say, right, go and look over an application state. Do we have any sticky notes available? If we do, then we know we can then display them on screen. If we don't, then we can then display the, the kind of the empty kind of sort of notification to our users to then actually create a sticky note. So if that doesn't sound particularly easy to understand, then bear with me because it will play it itself out and you'll understand it as we walk through and we start creating those, those parts to the application. So let's now go over and do that now, follow along, and it will all come clear as we work through this part of the application. 
Okay, so let's move over data types here on the left-hand side, just choose that second option from the connect menu there. And you can see we're into this new screen here. Now this will allow us to define our schema for our data type. So let's now create the data type here, select that. And we're gonna call this one just simply note, not notes or anything like that, just note because it represents a single note. Hit create here. Now we need to start adding the actual fields in. So as I said before, we had kind of like the, the description here. So let's just type in description. Now this is gonna be of a string because it's gonna be alpha numeric characters. So just choose a string here, hit create. Let's add a brand new field in here. We're gonna call this one color. And I'm gonna choose a data type here to be of type color. We've seen this before, hit create. And I'm gonna add a brand new field in here as well. And we're gonna call this one create date, which will just track that as a, as a, as a date in time. Now we're only gonna be displaying the actual uh, date on screen, so that's fine, but just choose a date and time. It doesn't matter. We can format this later when we display it with inside the user interface. Hit the create option. And I'm gonna create an additional field in here as well called is new so this is something that's not going to be visual we're not going to see this within inside the user interface but we can track this within the note whether this is a brand new note that's been added to the user interface and that's going to be important further down the line don't worry about that for now we'll come back to what that actually does but let's add the field in i'm going to type here is new just like that now with the data type here choose the boolean here so it's going to be a true or a false hit the create and then we are good to go the only little kind of change we need to make here is that we need to kind of say what this is new value is so just I'm going to enforce a false on this anyway so here I'm setting this to be false so when we create a brand new note it will have false by default everything else here will be set to these uh, well basically no values because there's nothing there at all with color we're going to be applying our color when we actually create our actual note itself so again not too worried about this that's all created the data type there is on the left hand side and we are good to go so now what we need to do is we now need to move over to the app state section where we need to now sort of say, okay, I need to create a variable that's going to store all of these notes, which is going to be of type note. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so on the left hand side, just below the data types there, just choose app values here. Now we're back into this screen. We've seen this one before. Let's now create a brand new app state variable here. So just choose that. And I'm just going to simply call this notes here. So it's plural S because it's containing more than one note here. Now this is the clever bit. This is where we say the data type is no longer any of these, but actually our data type is going to be of type data type. So just choose data type and now Flutterflow will change the UI and we'll say, okay, well, what type am I going to be? So I'm going to say no. It's the only one that we've got in here. It's the one that we just created. Now, here we go. This is where we now use is list for the first time. It's the first time that we need to toggle this on here. This will mean that this note, this actual uh, app state variable will be a list of the notes as mentioned previously. And we also need to put this particular option as well is because we need to persist this. So this will uh, as use the local storage, a bit like what we did with the dark mode thing where I use the local storage of a browser application. It will store um, all of these notes. So when we then come back to this application, all of our notes will be retrieved. Now, of course, if we clear all of our caches out and all that kind of stuff from our browser, we'll then lose those notes because we're not really hooking this onto a database. We're not persisting this in a database um, on the cloud or anywhere like that. Now, of course, we're going to come back to future sort of seasons of our um, of our of our sort of learning Flutterflow where we'll cover databases and all that kind of stuff. But for now, we're just going to use this as persisted. Hit the create option, and there is our brand new uh, sort of application state variable all created. So the great thing is we've now got that in place. Although it's empty, doesn't contain anything, it's now in place for us now to carry on building out the UI to get us to a point where we can then start actually adding notes actually into that application state variable. So let's now move back over to the widget tree and let's start now carrying on building our UI. Okay, so back on the home page then, let's give ourselves a little bit more room to play with here. Let's just collapse some of these widgets here because we now want to kind of start doing some work down in this particular area here. So this is our content column. This is the bit that's kind of in the middle. We now need to create a brand new column widget. So just hit the little plus here and then go to column and we need to give our column a name. So just move up here to the top right. I'm just gonna put a name in there. It's called notes scrollable column like that. And um, as the name sounds, we'll come back to the scrolling nature of that in due course. Don't worry too much about that. We'll come back and make some property changes because we're gonna want our notes to be scrollable as we kind of over 
overload the amount that's actually inside the display at that particular time. Now, this is where we now need to add the conditional builder widget, really important. So we're gonna to want to either display these notes or we're gonna to wanna to display this message back to the user. So this is where the conditional builder is really, really handy. Hit the little plus here, type in conditional like that. You can just see here, it's down on the base elements here, just select that, and that's now added to the UI. So the conditional builder widget is there. You don't see anything visual other than kind of like a reference to it on the actual user interface and it's waiting for us to add more widgets to it. So what you can see there is we've got this, we've got two conditions here. We've got an if and we've got an else. Now the conditional builder widget, if you had lots of different conditions to check and lots of different widgets to display, then you can add in many, many more conditions. And you do that with the conditional builder selected on the right hand side here, you can hit this little plus here and it'll add in more conditional checks that you can actually make. Now, of course, if all of those conditions in the top here don't match what they should be checking against, then of course there is always an else. There's a fallback. In our case, if, they, if there are no sticky notes available, then we just want to display these series of widgets to the UI, uh, to the user, just to say that there is no sticky notes actually available. So this is gonna be the very important one here first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this conditional check. So we've inside here, just select the, where it says unset, and we're into this fairly familiar panel now that we're starting to see more as we move through the series. Where it says conditions, just select that and choose the single condition. So what we can do, we can now put our first value check in there. So we'll just select that. So let's select the unset here, and we now need to do this check. We're now gonna go into the application state. We're gonna make a reference to our notes here, and we need to look at the available options. So what we're checking for here really is the number of items. If you are greater than zero, so you've certainly got a sticky note or one sticky note or more, then we then want to display the sticky notes on display. If not, then as I said, we just need to display that other message. So where it says number of items, just select that. And that's all we need to do, just hit confirm. And we're gonna say is now greater than Okay, and set the second value here, and we're just gonna say it's greater than zero. Anything greater than zero will certainly represent that we have sticky notes. Just hit confirm, and that's now all in place. Now this little then is important because this is now gonna reference, well, what are you gonna display inside? We'll add that widget now. So we're over on the left-hand side, you've got a different choice here. We need to really add it in this particular location. Okay, so with the if selected, we can hit the little plus here. So just choose plus. I'm gonna select the column option. And at the top here, let's give our widget a name. So I'm gonna call this one notes column, just like that, just hit the little tick. Now, if I go back to now the conditional builder, just choose conditional builder there. You can see now that that's now filled in. So we know that if the number of items is greater than zero, then show the notes column, otherwise, and we now need to create the otherwise widget. So just move over here to the left-hand side. Make sure that you just select that little visibility option there, put the little eye. So we've now got the, uh, the the UI has now been updated now to display any widgets that we've actually got there. So just choose the little plus here. So we're gonna put a container on display now. So just choose container here, and then you can see that's now represented on the UI. Let's now just go up here, rename this. I'm just gonna call this one No Notes a Container, just like that, hit the little check there. And then just for now, we're just gonna put another column in there. Just choose the column here. Let's give our column a name. So I'm just gonna call this No Notes a Column, just like that, hit the little check. So with our no notes container, let's just select that again here. Let's just set some properties here on the right hand side. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete the, the width out here and we're just gonna choose this little option here called infinity, which basically means that that container is now gonna uh, sort of stretch indefinitely across the user interface. If you're running a really, really wide resolution, it's gonna go right across, which we can do here. Now with a height, we just wanna change this. We're gonna set this now to 400. Um, that should be just reasonable amount of height for us. With the fill color, we can just remove that just with that select there let's just select that let's just clear that color we don't actually need that fill color and i think that is it so it's pretty well much a dumb container actually we don't really need to do much with it because the container is going to kind of like uh hold everything else that we got with inside it so even back to our notes column then let's just select that Okay, now let's now start putting the actual widgets in there as well. So hit the little plus here. The first one that we're gonna add in is an icon. So just do a search for icon. Let's just select that, that's in there. Let's now start configuring our icon. So let's give our icon a really large size here. Let's just say 72, nice and big there. Where it says settings outlined, let's choose the icon that we want. So just choose settings outlined. Now I'm gonna type in here, edit note outlined like that. So just choose that one just there on the left-hand side, edit note outline, just select that. That's a little bit more visual cue there to exactly what it actually is. 
Now the actual color here, the icon color is down is secondary text. That's fine for us because we want it to kind of represent that. And of course, as we switch between light and dark mode, you can kind of see that that color works well across of the, both themes. Let's just move up here and let's just give our icon a name. So I'm just going to say notes icon, just like that. Hit the little check there. So just down here on this particular side here, let's add another widget in here. Let's just select that and let's choose the text here. So we've got some text now. Let's put some text in here. Let's type in empty notes, something like that. And scroll down here on the right hand side. Let's choose our text theme style. Just going to drop this down and I'm going to choose headline medium, make it rather large there with our weight. We're just going to make this a little bit stronger here. It's going to choose semi bold. In fact, sorry, medium there. And then our font size, uh, in fact, font size is fine. Let's just change our text color here. Let's just change this then to the secondary text. So a little bit more in keeping there. And let's add another, in fact, let's give our widget a name, empty notes text, just like that. Hit the little check here. Let's add it in a brand new widget here. In fact, let's, um, let's just duplicate that one. Let's just duplicate it like that. Just scroll down. Let's just select it. Let's give it a name here. So I'm gonna call this one empty notes description text just like that hit the check here we need to move down here we need to modify some styling so let's just drop that down here and let's just choose a label medium just like that a little bit smaller and everything else is looking fine for us there let's just scroll up here let's go to where it says empty notes so i'm just going to say create your first note by hitting the plus button like that so everything is kind of like justified to the top here. We now need to bring this cent central. So just choose where it says notes column like that. Let's now just bring that down to the middle, just like that. And that's nicely positioned in the center for us. So that's great. As you can see here, we've currently got the conditional visibility set to true here. So we're seeing everything that is actually then inside this part of the conditional builder. If I hit the little uh, sort of eyeball there, I can then now switch that between now the series of widgets is actually in this part of the conditional builder. So let's now start working on that particular area. So let's introduce a brand new widget. This one is called the wrap widget. So with the notes column there selected, just hit the little plus and we're just going to do a search for wrap there like that. Just choose wrap. So what the wrap's going to do is we're going to put all of our sticky notes with inside the wrap. So then when we reduce or we increase the size of our browser window, all of our notes will then wrap down underneath each other. So you just kind of bring them in and they'll just sort of then stack on each on top of each other. So let's give our wrap widget a name. So I'm just going to call this one notes wrap like that just hit the little check here and i can show you how this is going to work um before we then then next move into actually creating the sticky notes themselves let's add some containers in here so just hit the little plus here put the little container in here let's just give a temporary size here of 200 by say 200 just like that let's give our fill color um something just it can be anything it's like so choose a little primary color here that's all that we need to do now if i now duplicate this if i just keep duplicating these like that as you can see there now what i'm going to do is we've inside the notes wrap here i'm just going to move here to the right hand side let's give some spacing here so let's just do 32 by 32. Now, if I just bring the the handle resize uh, box, this sort of box up, which I've kind of already got, but you need to scroll over there. Let's just, just select that. When I now bring this in, you can now see what's actually happening inside the UI. We're just kind of seeing those sticky notes kind of wrap down. So that that is great. That's a, a good position for us to now be in because we've kind of got that particular key widget in place now for us to then start then working our magic on the actual sticky notes themselves. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode um hopefully hopefully you found this particular episode interesting as you kind of work through building up to where we are right now and uh and i look forward to seeing you in the next one